We're in the largest Ebola virus disease outbreak in history as it continues to wage on, rage on in West Africa. Uh, right now, the figures are 5,864 suspected or confirmed cases of EBD since December of 2013, resulting in 2,811 deaths. That's a mortality rate of 47.9, which is hopeful and it's not a good situation, but it's a vast improvement over figures from August 13th, which are at 54.8% of mortality rate. And the CDC is warning that if we are not able to contain it soon, with 70% uh, of all patients being treated in approved quarantined areas by December of this year, we could top well over a million um, by January of 2015, which is a worrying number. I mean, it's an alarming amount of uh, deaths, you know, for something that, again, we don't have a vaccine for, we don't have a direct cure for. Mm -hmm. And I think that the uh, biggest issue here is that the reason it is that large of an outbreak, the biggest one in history, like you said, over 2,800 deaths, the reason that it is so alarming is because of the area that it struck in. Mm -hmm. I think that, unfortunately, there's been a lot of uh, mass hysteria or panic in the public instead of what we should be doing is finding ways to intervene. This is not something that developed countries are really at risk of facing. Um, for now. For, well, for now, but we have better sanitary like um, conditions. We have uh, protective gear mm -hmm. for people that are going to come in contact with it. All those things are going to prevent a widespread pandemic in mm -hmm a place like the United States. The problem being that it hit, where did it hit initially? Was it Guinea Sierra in, Leone, in Guinea. Sierra, yeah, Liberia in March? And I think that the problem being that those places are ones that are very unsanitary, there's no protective gear, and also cultural customs sometimes prevent people from seeking help because the symptoms are so similar to the flu mm -hmm. that people also don't know. So I think the good news about you know this piece of information now and what the CDC is doing and what the governments are doing, and I think Obama is speaking currently, right? At yes, um, the U.S. has pledged $750 million toward this effort and as, as also 3,000 troops on the ground. Um, I'm not sure they're necessarily trained in how to deal with this, but it is a help, hopefully. I think that that's the right step. Over 130 countries are now finally, you know, uh, helping and, and giving aid to these countries in West Africa that have been so severely affected. We've had very isolated cases of uh, individuals that have traveled to these countries that are coming back mm -hmm. that have had presented the Ebola virus and the strain. In particular, this strain is the Zyre strain of the virus, which is kind of the more virulent one and the one that uh, is has higher fatality, it's between 40 and 90 percent. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, very dangerous, but again, I think that, you know, mass panic is not going to help. We just need to help allocate resources to help these countries, because that's where the danger lies. Yes. Well, hope it, it does seem hopeful in that other countries are uh, around the world are pledging their help and their support and their money, and we, they, the CDC has released a lot of alarming numbers regarding this. Um, well, as, as Christina noted, a lot of this has to do with sanitation and also perhaps public mistrust of officials and then of course uh, quarters with many people inside sharing very close living conditions. Um, but the, the report released from the CDC claims that it can be contained and ended if 70% of all patients treat in the approved quarantine area uh, by December 2014. However, for every 30 days that this does not ha happen, the number needed to account for that 70% could triple. Um, and. The number of cases in Liberia, for instance, has doubled in every 20 days, while Sierra Leone is doubling every 30 to 40 days. So this does require fast action, or, or, or fast reporting at least. And I think that one of the main problems is that uh, the Ebola virus is contracted via bodily fluids, yes. which again are some of the symptoms of this disease, you know, that uh, vomiting and diarrhea and blood and things like that are hemorrhaging are things that are, again, concurrent with some of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is that it's very likely to contract it if you don't have the measures to help aid the victims, you know. You know, I've read stories about people aiding uh, diseased people or even dressing them for, for funerals. funeral purposes yeah. and still having it spread. And it's... I mean, it doesn't surprise me that there is mass hysteria. 
And in some of the rituals of these countries, I mean, we're, we're talking about Sierra Leone and we're talking about Liberia and Guinea, and we're talking about countries where there are funeral ritual, like the ritualistic customs for these funerals tend to uh, imply a lot of coming in contact with these mm -hmm. victims and their corpses. So there's a lot to combat here, but um, as I said, we, the CDC's warnings are very hard to look at, very, very steep, scary numbers, uh, but it is possible to fight the disease or fight back against the disease, rather. Uh, please let us know what you believe below in the comments and uh, read more about this as we develop the story further, and please be sure to subscribe.